People, people, come here. Before we get started today, I've got a secret I want to tell you. So come here. Yep, it's just me and you here now, yeah? The secret is this. It's shameful. You're not going to believe it. I've been playing football manager for 21 years. That's not the shameful secret. The shameful secret is, in all that time, I've never, ever won the Premier League. I know. Shameful. Shocking. But the football manager 22 beta is out now. So we are going to put that right with Chelsea Football Club and big bad beastie boy Romelu Lukaku. I can't wait to get into this. So tailor made gaming, roll that intro. <laughs> Hello, 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 people. Welcome back to the channel. It is me, TaylorMade Gaming, back at you once again with another video. And this video is one I have been waiting months and months to make for all you guys because it is episode one of the Chelsea FM22 beta. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get into this. I've been playing this pretty much all night, ever since the beta dropped at 8pm last night. Played it to about half one this morning. Woke up again this morning. Thank God I woke up again this morning. It'd be a bit worrying if I didn't. But I woke up again this morning and I got straight back onto this. And so that is why we are already in place, in position for our first competitive game of the season. It is the European Super Cup. Us, Chelsea. That feels weird saying that. But Chelsea being the Champions League winners, taking on Villarreal, of course, the Europa League winners. And so I've got a chance for a trophy in my very first competitive game on FM22. What a nice way that would be to kick the year off. Hopefully we can do it. We are on the 19th, the 10th of August even. I thought I said the 19th then, getting me dates wrong. We're on the 10th of August and we have done quite a bit of transfer business already. We started the summer with a £40 million transfer budget and we've got £34 million left. But we have done a couple of deals, both incoming and one big outgoing deal. I will show you them in a second. But just before we do get into that, if you do enjoy this video and if you are excited for Football Manager 22, pop a massive thumbs up down below. And if you're new, subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world to me if we got a few subscribers off this video. So please do subscribe and smack that bell button to get notified whenever I do release a new video. We've got this series going on and I'm going to be starting a new FIFA series in the week as well on career mode on there. So check that out as well. And so let's go and get into it. Let's get into the transfers that we have done since we've last... Well, not since we've last been together. It's the start of a new series, isn't it? I'm getting into my old groove already. And so here we are, the transfer history screen. And you can see that we have only done two main transfer deals for the first team. The first guy coming in is Benjamin Pavard. He's a little bit of an FM legend for me. He won me the Champions League 
three years ago, I think it is now, for West Ham, ironically, against Chelsea in the final. He scored a cracking volley for me in that final. So I'm hoping he can do something similar here. And you can see he's a right back, but can play centre back and can play pretty much anywhere in his own half and can play centre back if required to. He's got decent composure, decent anticipation, good stamina, which, as we know from the feature releases, is going to be important this year. He's got good passing, good tackling, so I'm very much looking forward to linking up with him once again. We paid £15.5 million for him, which, if you look at his value, 34 to 42 million. I'm quite happy with that deal. I'm very, very happy with that deal. And that new transfer value uh, system they've got going on, I really, really like. That's one of my favourite new features so far. Rather than just having a random number that feels like it's been plucked out of the air, this now feels a bit more realistic. And as well, the Ask Agent for Availability feature that's been updated this year, that has been very, very good. I've been using that on every player I've been interested in. And it's very, very good. I really do like that. Let me know down below what your favourite new feature this year is. And as well as that, we've got another defender, Dan Axel Zagadu. Do, do, Zagadu, a do, a do. Let's hope we're singing that quite a lot because he's keeping clean sheets or even better, uh, scoring goals and winning us games. We've paid £18.5 million for him. He's another central defender, can also play left back if needs be. He's not the quickest guy ever. I might put him on some quickness training because his acceleration is quite poor. But once he gets up to his top speed, he's got a decent top speed of 15. Jumping reach is good. Strength is good. Composure is good. Positioning is good. So I really, really like him. I can see... I can see Zagadu and Pavard forming quite a decent centre-back partnership. But what also I like about this year is that a new thing on contracts and in transfers is that players are happy to wait until somebody else leaves to, to take their place in the first team. And so a big a proponent of that is Zagadu in his deal. He said he was happy to wait until Thiago Silva leaves to take over his place as a first team regular. So I do really, really like that. So that's just another little real life immersion feature that has been going on. And then we've got another couple of young players here. Mateus Morea, he's going to play for the young team. I had nothing to do in his transfer deal. And Victor Sol De De Dindy, again, not one I had anything to do with, mainly brought in for the youth team. And so we had one big player leave the club under my management, and that is Antonio Rudiger. He had a transfer estimated value of between 10 and 13 million pounds, I think it was. And Paris came in for him and they offered us 20 million. So I took it and I'm quite happy with the deal. I'm not Rudiger's biggest fan. I don't think he's that great. And so to get him off the books, I was happy with that. He only he played 99 times for Chelsea. That's a bit harsh on my side. I should have let him get his 100th appearance. I didn't realise that before he left. But yep, Antonio Rudiger has gone. And you can see why I brought in the other two centre-backs now. And we've still got 36 million left to play with. So, if you know any players that I can get in for that price who might be able to improve Chelsea's first team, let me know down below. But also, I do kind of want to save a bit of money so I can try the transfer deadline day and I can see how that works. 
I think that could be interesting and that will be on the next video. We're going to have a game and we're going to have transfer deadline day on episode two of this series. So hope you look forward to that. And so, but just before we do get into today's game, let's go and have a look at the team that I have chosen for this game. This will be the team for tomorrow's game. We've got Kepa. Oh, I'm going to try and say his name, but I'm going to murder this. Ariza Balaga. I've probably got that a million percent wrong, but it's Kepa in goal. Azpil Coretta on left-back duties. Pavard on the right. Both as inverted wing-backs as we try to pack the middle of the pitch. Zaga do, do, do. Zaga do, a do, a do. And Thiago Silva as our no-nonsense centre-backs just trying to keep the ball away from our keeper in the centre of defence. And then in the midfield, we've got Mason Mount, we've got Saul, we've got Kai Havertz, and then up top, we've got Pulisic on the left, Zayet on the right, and that big dream boy, Romelu Lukaku up top. He's one of my favourite strikers in the world. And a little bit of a side mission I've got, I've given myself in this save, is to make Lukaku top scorer in the Premier League and the Champions League. And maybe, possibly, win him the Ballon d'Or. Maybe. Hopefully. You never know. But that is a little bit of a side mission because I love Lukaku. I think he's so, so good. And yep, he's up top. We're going positive. We're going sort of passing. Work ball into box. Obviously, play through the middle. Uh, throw it long. Distribute to playmaker. Counter on when we win the ball. And then regroup when we lose it. And then when we're out of possession, we're going higher defensive line, higher line of engagement. And yeah, I think that that is a pretty decent team. I think we should be beating Villarreal. And just before we do get into the game, we have been told there are 4,000 new questions in press conferences. So, shall we do the first one and see if there are? Here we are in the Chelsea press room, I believe this is. And so you can see the board looks pretty much the same as last year. So not much has changed there. And so let's get into this. First question from Alexander Kurt from One Football. Is a win in the European Super Cup of exceptional importance? Or is it the kind of match you go into without too much pressure to achieve a result? Uh, I hope we can add, add another trophy to the collection and give the fans a reason to celebrate. And now, Pat Parks from ITV. With the European Super Cup acting as the season's traditional curtain raiser, does it offer your side the opportunity to lay down a marker? It would be nice if we could get a win. And are you looking forward to the spectacle of the European Super Cup? I am. And well... That wasn't worth doing, was it? I don't think there was any new questions in there. Might have expected some about it being my first ever game in management, but apparently not. And so, let's go and get into the first game on FM22. Oh, actually, before we do get into the game, I do just want to say I really like how these scout reports are done now. I like that you get a grade rather than a number. Like you can see here for Ryan Gravenberch, 19-year-old wonder kid. You can see his pros nice and easily. You can see there that he's got good for... He matches our philosophies. He's adaptable. He's technical. He's exempt from registration rules. And you can see that our scout thinks he would be an A-plus signing. And you can see there, he'd be extremely interested. 42 to 49.5 million. So, unfortunately, we don't quite have enough money to go and get him. But, you never know. But, I do like these new scout reports. And I like all the buttons being down here. Especially, like, the approach agent one being in with all the others. That is very, very nice. 
And now into the game. Here we go, pre-match tactical advice. I'm going to accept the advice for the opposition instructions. I always, always do that. And uh, who's this t telling this to me? Do I know? Or is it just all my staff? I think it's just a whole group staff effort thing here. But they're saying, I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that Callum hudson Odoi and Rhys James have a strong partnership and play well together the left-hand side. And that's something we should look to build on. I like that. I like that little message. Here we are in the dressing room for the first time on FM22. I'm going to go pump my fists. And I think I'm going to use one of the new lines that we can use in dressing rooms in Team Talks this year. I'm going to go, we should be winning this trophy? Or do I want to go, this is a match we should be winning? I'm going to go, yeah, we should be winning this trophy. A little bit of reaction, but not too much. And then here we go, just as ever. Just tell everyone that I do believe in them. And that's done a little bit, but not too much. And now prediction time for the first time this year. I'm going to be confident. 3-0 Chelsea. Come on, you blues. First highlight of FM22, and it's us with the ball. Kai Havertz plays it forward to Lukaku. To Benjamin Pavard, who tries to play it through to Mount, but it gets headed away. And let's see if we can see any of the new graphical improvements that Miles and SI have talked about over the last few weeks. It does look a lot smoother to me. You can see where the players are actually touching the ball to make it move, which is very nice, as opposed to how it was before. And now Villarreal have had a shot, and it's hit the post, and Pavard's got it away. <sighs> Almost went behind very early. 38 minutes gone, and Villarreal are coming forward again. Pareo with the ball. Can we win it back? No, we can't. It's gone into the box, and Saul has got it away. And now Cockrellin into Trigueros, into Pareo, and Turexi, and Maxi Go Moy Gomez even, has given Villarreal the lead. Not a good start on FM22. That was much, much too easy. Oh my days. They just passed it around us. And they made that look very easy, even if it did go in off the post. Just about five minutes to half time, the ex Spurs man, Juan Foyf, goes to Pau Torres. And Pau Torres, who was a hero of mine last year on FM, plays it out wide. And that's the goal scorer, Gomez, plays it forward to Gerard as Pilcreta heads it all the way back to Kepa. And now to Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva taking his time, goes to Saul, to Silva, Havertz, Azpil Correa, Mount, this is looking a little bit better, spoke too soon, as we've given it away again, and now it's Pau Torres, all the way back to Foyth, to Coquelin, Villarreal keeping the ball beyond themselves under not much pressure, and can we get the ball back in? No, we can't. Villarreal go into Gerard and it's into the box and it's 2-0. Oh my days. Well, the search for a first trophy might go beyond the first game. Oh, this, this has not been good. I was fully expecting this tactic to work better. But apparently it's not. And oh, tight offside. What? Oh, okay. That made no sense. And well, that's half time. Villarreal have had eight shots, two are five, four on target, two are one. 55% of the ball and an XG of 0 0.71. Doing much better than our XG of 0 0.35 and 45% of the ball. Something needs to change. I'm going to go hands on hips. 
I'm going to go... Uh, oh, I don't know. I want a much better display in the second half. I do like how there's so many lines you can say now, and they're all a lot more contextual to what's going on in the game. I do really, really like that. And I'm going to change some of the tactics. I'll tell you what I've done in a second. Okay, this is what we've done. We've changed the wingbacks to actual proper wingbacks. We've changed Saul to a ball-winning midfielder on support. And we're telling the team to just lump the ball forward to Lukaku and just see what happens off that man's big head. Because Lukaku has not been in this game as of yet. So hopefully that can do something. If not, I'll be making changes rather quickly. What is he going to do with this football? He's going to hug it for a long time apparently. And then he's played it long to Moy Gomez. Come on, we need to get this ball back. Pavard tries to, but loses it. And now Moy Gomez plays it into Trigueros. One more Villarreal goal would end this as a contest. And now it's their man, Chuck. That's I'm going to call him Chuck. I'm sorry, I just can't pronounce his name. Chuck with it goes back into Pareo. Aurea. And then Chuck with it, and it's free. Oh, it's a nightmare start to FM 22. 3 nil down. Let's check this on the replay and then we're going to make some subs. They've just passed it all around us. I think them no-nonsense centre-backs aren't helping us. Well, following that third goal, we've gone 3 up top. We've got Werner and the youngster Soonsop Bell joining Lukaku. Kovacic has come on as well. He's just behind that front three. We're going to have to go attacking. And we're going to go just lump it forward and just see what happens. This has been a disaster. Immediately following that goal and following the subs, we've got a highlight. Lukaku plays it wide to Bell. And what can Bell do? He crosses it into the box is what he can do. And it goes over Pedraza. And now Timo Werner into Pavard, into Saul, into Werner. Werner shoots and just goes wide or goes quite wide actually, doesn't it? Ten minutes left to go in the game. Aspilqueta throws it long and soon shot Bell. Soon shot Bell on his debut. The youngster gets himself a goal. That is very nice. That is one little highlight from this game. Very nicely done. He's played one game in football and he's scored in a European Cup final. Not bad. Oh, we're into injury time. Mount's got the ball. Mount tries to play it forward, but his pass gets blocked. And now it's Villarreal coming at us again. Don't score a fourth. Please don't score a fourth. Dan Juma with the ball. Dan Juma. What's he going to do? He's crossed it in and it's... It's 4-1. I was saying the other day how I've missed FM. Not missing it anymore, am I? This is a shocking result. And let us have another look at this on the replay. Danjima with it into Trigueros and yeah, not good. Tactical rethink possibly needed after this game. And yeah, do I really want to watch this? Do I want to? Oh, you know what? It's the Super Cup. I'm going to see him lift it. It hurts. It sucks. But we will be back. We will get back here. And go on. Go on. Lift it up. Yeah. Well done, lads. You were the better team. We did not deserve that result. Here we are back in the dressing room. And here's another cool little feature. You can see how it's in a right state. Because the players have not been tidying up after themselves. I do like that little bit of difference between before the game and after the game. Uh, I'm going to go hands on hips. 
Uh, oh, I don't know. What do we say? Failure is always hard to take. Uh, we weren't good enough. And everybody's motivated. That's one positive. And so that is where we are going to leave it for today. A little bit of a longer video just because it is the first of a brand new game. And so we will have a look, see when we're going to come back. And then we, I shall let you go for today. Okay, so we've got quite a few games in August. One, two, three, four, five games in August. I think I think we'll come back for Arsenal so we can play the Arsenal game and then go through transfer deadline day. How does that sound? I think that sounds good. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, pop a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager content and FIFA content. A whole lot of good stuff coming up here on the channel. Let me know down below. Who are you managing on this year's FM? And let me know what your first result was in a competitive game. I'm sure it was better than mine. Surely it must have been. And follow me on Twitter as well, at TaylorMGaming. Thank you so, so much for watching. I shall see you on Monday for Arsenal and the transfer deadline day. See you later.